Doesn't sound very classified to me. You don't let highly classified things just float down in the desert where your enemies, spies, can look at them. And the basic materials used in Mogul, like paper-backed foil, would never be confused for an alien spacecraft. You can go down to the grocery store and buy a Hershey bar, and, and what it's wrapped in is the exact same material that the radar targets are made from. So nobody would have been mystified by this. And then there are the famous photographs. Jesse Marcel Jr. insists the material in the picture is not what he saw. It was not the same. It was not at all. Roswell researchers say there's one explanation. The government switched the debris. And they believe there have been other suspicious doings as well. Jim Mars points to this 1995 GAO report. They came up with no documents stating that it was a saucer or they were aliens. But what they did find was that the, all of the communication records in and out of Roswell between 47 and 48 had all been somehow misplaced or destroyed. In 1997, the Air Force releases yet another report. This one called Roswell Case Closed. Air Force officials hope this will explain once and for all any doubts about alien bodies. Bodies observed in the New Mexico desert were probably test dummies that were carried aloft by U.S. Air Force high altitude balloons for scientific research. But there's a problem with this explanation. Air Force records show that test dummies weren't used until 1953, six years after the crash at Roswell. Colonel, how do you square uh, the UFO enthusiasts saying that uh, they're talking about 1947, but well, you're talking about dummies used in the uh, in the 50s, almost a decade later. Well, I'm afraid that's the problem that, that we have with time compression. I don't know what they saw in 47, but I think over a period of time they began to lose exactly when the date was, and there were lots of dummies dropped. Well, obviously not all the dummies crashed at Roswell. <laughs> So is it really case closed when it comes to Roswell and UFOs? you were coming, I again got called a friend of mine mm -hmm. who was a Navy doctor mm -hmm. during the same time period we're talking about, mm -hmm. slightly after that, and he all of a sudden was healing a pilot, mm -hmm. a person who had been pilot, and he began to tell him a story, and he basically said, one day I was up, I was up in one of the, uh, the, the faster airplanes that we had. And I had something that was a spherical object that, that was ahead of me. And I called back and I said, are there any, are there any friendlies over here? Mm -hmm. He actually took off from a Texas location. He had, uh, headed off that way. And uh, towards New Mexico. And he, uh, he said, they said, well, no, there's no friendlies here. He said, not only that, but he's accelerating away from me. And yet I have the fastest airplane that's been designed. And was it that time was and therefore it can't be one of us. Well, that was and he said, "Well, they said, well, you have the you have the you have the weapon on board. It was a new design." Oh. And he said, "Go on ahead and shoot it down." And so he did. He shot down the Roswell craft. Do you know who did it? He said, "Don't tell. I get, don't give the people my name, nor nor, nor and give you them, know this nor guy? Give, no, he certainly. He does. shot it down. He's, he's a very dear the, the doc. With the, what kind of a the weapon? Doc, the doctor is a very dear friend of mine. What what kind and of a weapon? I don't know. We we have all kinds. Because bullets weapons. were only fifteen hundred miles an hour back we, then. We we have magnetic pulse. So we have Anyhow, Nikola Tesla.